I'm Dave Collins with CleverHiker.com. In this episode, we're going to take a look at navigation with a map, compass, and GPS. No matter how simple your route may be, understanding how to use basic navigation equipment is critical for any backpacking adventure. A map and compass will help keep you from getting lost or help you find your way again, and they'll also allow you to explore rarely traveled areas in the backcountry safely. Any expert will tell you that a map and compass are essential items for any backcountry trip. Becoming a navigation expert will take years of practice and experience in the field, but learning the basics is very simple. Make sure to hone your skills before you attempt any backpacking trip that will require difficult navigation. Never put yourself in an unsafe position by being underprepared. If you need to brush up on your skills or want to learn some advanced techniques, consider signing up for an orienteering course in your area. Orienteering courses can be a lot of fun and they'll give you great practice in a safe environment. The first navigation tool that you need to understand is your map. Maps come in all shapes and sizes, and they'll give you detailed information about the land that you'll be traveling through. Guidebooks and online resources often have simple maps that show trails traveling over basic terrain. They can be very helpful when you're trip planning, but they're not useful for on-trail navigation. A topographical map is a tool that you'll need to navigate in the wilderness. Topo maps are much more accurate, detailed, and they provide an elevation profile of the area. The key to understanding topographical maps is understanding contour lines. Contour lines are the small squiggly lines that cover the entire map. A single contour line marks a given elevation on a map. For example, this 12,000 foot contour line follows the inside of this valley, touching every place where the elevation is at 12,000 feet. If you travel up or down an elevation, you'll hit a new contour line, which will denote a different elevation. For example, if we traveled uphill from the 12,000 foot elevation line, we would soon hit this new contour line representing 12,200 feet. Because contour lines represent different elevation points, they never intersect. When they're very close together, they represent steep changes like a cliff, and when they're far apart or spread out, they represent very gradual elevation changes like a valley floor or a field. Topo maps help you to orient yourself by showing you the terrain features of the area. When you look at the contour lines, you'll see peaks, valleys, rivers, cliffs, and other prominent landscape features. You can see on this map, when you look at the contour lines, that there's a ridge here that circles around this valley, which the trail comes up through and then to the top of this pass. When the trail is down on the valley floor, the contour lines are very spread out, meaning that it will be a gradual, easy walk. And then when it hits the end of the valley, the contour lines start to get much closer together. They switch back up to the top of this pass. So you can see when you're walking along this trail, you're gonna have some very high peaks on the side of you. It's gonna be really beautiful, easy, and gradual along these lakes. When you hit the side of this canyon, you're gonna start going up in elevation, switch back, get some great views up at the top of this pass where you're gonna be able to see in both directions for many miles. When you understand the features in the landscape, you'll be able to understand your trip much better and plot your route from one point to the next. Good topographical maps may also have colors and shades to help you orient yourself. Most of the time, areas that are shaded in green are dense vegetation, where clear areas are above tree line. All topographical maps will also have a scale to help you understand the size of the terrain and a legend to help you understand the symbols on the map. Good backpacking maps will also list hiking distances on well-defined trails, but that isn't always the case so make sure you check your map for trail mileage. Declination is another measurement that will be listed on a topographical map. Maps are oriented with lines pointing to true north, the North Pole, but your compass needle will actually point to magnetic north, which is slightly different than true north. 
The degree to which magnetic north is different than true north depends on where you are on the Earth, and declination is simply a correction for that difference between your map and your compass. Sometimes declination is so small, especially over short distances, that it won't really matter. But for maximum accuracy, especially when you're hiking over long distances, it's important to correct for declination. A simple saying that will help those of us in North America remember is, declination east, compass least. Declination west, compass best. That means that if the declination measurement on your map is to the east, you'll subtract numbers from your overall bearing. Declination east, compass least. And if your declination is to the west, you'll add degrees to your compass bearing. Your compass is the tool that you'll use with your topographical map to help you locate yourself or plan a route without needing trails in the wilderness. Even if you plan on staying on trail for your entire trip, knowing how to use a compass can come in very handy. For example, you might lose your way on the trail and need to be able to locate yourself on the map or find the best direction to travel in order to head out to a road. Or maybe you just want to explore an off-trail area, but you need to know which direction to travel and how to keep yourself from getting lost. To learn how to use a compass, let's start out by taking a look at the parts of a compass. The needle always points towards magnetic north, and the dial, or bezel, is the circular part on top of the compass that spins. Orienting lines are on the back of the dial, and they spin when the dial spins. Degree, or index lines, are the marks around the dial, and the direction of travel arrow is the way that you'll go after you've taken your bearing. Taking a compass bearing is pretty straightforward. Let's say, for example, that our trail has been covered in snow and we don't know which way to go. Here's what we'd do. First, we would locate where we are on the map, and then we would line up the edge of our compass with the direction that we want to travel. Next, we turn the dial until north on the bezel lines up with north on the map, and the orienteering lines on the back of the dial are lined up with the north-south lines of our map. Once we've lined up our compass, we double check our route to make sure we're gonna be heading in the right direction. Then we take the compass away from the map and we correct for declination. Once we've corrected for declination, we hold the compass away from our body and hold it flat and allow the needle to point towards magnetic north. Then we turn our body until north on the dial lines up with north on the bezel. Put the mouse in the house. With the north needle in its housing, we can look at the direction of travel arrow, which will tell us the direction we need to walk. If we're in an open area, we can pick a defined point on a horizon and walk towards it. Or, if we're in a heavily wooded area, we could pick an object like a tree, walk to that point, and then hold up our compass and take another reading and walk to another point to make sure that we stay on the right track. If you're traveling by compass for long distances, it's important to get very accurate readings and to use landmark clues to help you navigate the terrain. Clues like rivers, mountains, valleys, and ridges will help you make sure that you hit your mark. A one degree mistake could put you off your mark by over 100 feet after you've traveled one mile. So choosing smart routes is very important when traveling by compass over long distances. Don't shoot for a small target that's many miles away, because it'll be very hard to hit it exactly. Instead, use the terrain to your advantage and choose short goals to make sure that you stay on track. Another common use for a compass is to find your location on the map using only the terrain clues around you. This is called line location or triangulation. In order to use your compass for triangulation, you'll need to find two or three prominent features in the landscape that are also on your map, and it's best if they're spread out. To triangulate your position, you're gonna use the same technique that we just used for taking a bearing, except you're gonna reverse the order. Take your compass and point it at the first prominent feature that's also on your map. With a direction of travel arrow pointed at that feature, turn the dial until the north needle lines up in its housing. Now, take your compass and place it on the map. Line up the edge of your compass with the object that you just pointed at. 
Twist your compass until the orienteering lines on the back of the compass line up directly with the north-south lines on the map. And double check to make sure that the object you pointed at is lined up with the edge of the compass. Now, use a pencil to draw a line on the map coming away from the object you pointed at. Because of our calculation, we know that we must be somewhere along that line. If you repeat this process two or three times pointing at different objects in the area, your exact location will be the point where all three lines meet. Another very helpful navigation tool is a GPS device. If you're going on a trip with lots of off-trail navigation, a GPS device can come in very handy. If you get lost, a GPS unit will give you your exact coordinates, which you can use with your map to pinpoint exactly where you are. GPS units can also be used to store waypoints, which are previous locations that you've been to in the past, like a trailhead or your vehicle. You can input one or multiple coordinates into a GPS from a map or guidebook. Then you can use the GPS in the field to navigate you from one point to the next. Most GPS units only give you straight line navigation though, so you'll still need a map to see if there are any large terrain features that'll get in the way, like steep valleys, cliffs, or large rivers. A GPS unit can also track your hike as you go. It'll take periodic readings and put together a loose route of where you've been. It can also usually track mileage, elevation gain, and your speed. GPS units do have their shortfalls though, so always be careful when you take technology out on the trail. GPS units are run by batteries and batteries will wear out over time. So don't put yourself in a situation where you're gonna be in a lot of trouble if your GPS battery wears out. Also, GPS units can lose their signal in dense brush or deep valleys. You usually need a clear view of the sky and four satellites to pinpoint your location. Even if you do carry a GPS unit, always bring a map of the area and a compass to use as a backup. Make sure to practice your skills and consider taking an orienteering course to really master wilderness navigation. I'm Dave Collins for CleverHiker.com. Hike light, hike smart, and have fun.